Hello everybody, Andrew Blake from the digitalaudiomanual.com. Today we're going to begin a series of videos on how to begin a track. But before we start, I want to remind you that there's a link below to the free content navigation guide, which is an easy to navigate web page with links to all the content on this channel. And besides that, in the near future, I'm going to begin adding tips and other bits of information that will only be available there. You know, things like simple steps that will get you started and up and running quick. Things that are in the videos, but are written down in simple steps that serve as quick reminders when you need information down the road. If you're working with programs like WaveLab or Cubase Plugin, or the Cable Guys Shaper Box 2 and many, many other projects that are in the works, then I know you're going to find, just like I have, that this is an invaluable study aid. And the other thing I want to make sure you understand is that this is not a simple PDF. This is a constantly updated page that has any information that uh, is new or anytime videos are changed, really anything updated. And once you have it, you will always have the latest information constantly updated. So if you haven't gotten it already, go to the link below, click on it, and save it to your favorites. It's my gift to you, and it's absolutely free. Okay, so let's get started. So the question arises when you're staring at a blank project like we're looking at right now and we want to actually compose something, where do we start? One place to start is to pick out some chords. So let's do that. Lower zone, turn on my chords. Now I'm going to work in eight bar phrases. So I've set up an eight bar loop up here. And the first thing I want to do is just kind of fool around with the chords until I find something I like. Then I'm going to use those chords and create a chord track. I'm going to go to Project, Chord Track, Create Chord Events. And that's now written in the chords. Let's throw some basic drums on there. Start dragging these onto their own tracks. Name them. I like the fact that I can isolate the tracks I'm working on visually. Let's get some drum tracks going here. There's nothing that says how many drum tracks I need. I just go for what, you know, where the energy is. As soon as I feel the energy gone, then I move on. Let's throw a few more things in here. That's good. Now at this point, I'm going to uh, get them to a drum group. Lately, I've been putting everything but the kick into a drum subgroup as well. I like to put them all into a drum folder to get the colors right. That's it. Get all my tracks so I can see them again. Let's go ahead and throw a bass in there. Add bass into its own group. 
that base into a folder, add some colors, and this. Let's go ahead and layer up the initial keyboard sounds. I can just highlight a track and I can go up to project, chord track, chords to MIDI, and that will take all the chords from my chord track onto the MIDI track. And look for some kind of arpeggio here. Some kind of pad in there. And let's get those into their own group and folder. Colors. Get all the tracks visible again. I can hold Alt and Shift to pull down my selected faders. And then I can just kind of roughly do a rough mix. how we get it going, get some basic sounds, you know, get some energy going, get a feeling going, something to drive it, and then we can, uh, you know, bring elements in, out, refine it, add transitions, all the stuff we're going to do. So, all right, if you haven't grabbed your navigation guide, be sure to grab that before you go. Links to all the content on the channel, ever growing, and it's there for your benefit and my benefit to learn and review with. It's great to have you guys here. See you on the next video.